from the visionary director behind that movie where the trees kill people and the crappiest live action movie ever created ever, The Last Airbender, comes his newest foray into awfulness, Trap. What M. Night Shyamalan has done here is he's taken a film that makes almost no sense at all and he's married it with some of the dumbest people on the planet whilst at the same time creating a two-hour promo video for his daughter. It was almost the perfect plan. Except for I saw through it, buster. And I have reviewed this film, Trap, and I have spoiled this film, Trap, and you can watch both those videos on my channel, Adam Does Movies, and feel free to subscribe if you enjoy this content. But let's really get down to business. This movie has so many stupid parts that it really had to have a top 10 dumbest moments in Trap video created. And who better to craft such a video than a man that's been dead inside for several years and really has nothing better to contribute to society. So let's begin with the number 10 spot. There are going to be spoilers in this video, I just want to get that out there. The movie's still very fresh in theaters, so uh, don't hate me. Alright, I warned you. Josh Hartnett plays Cooper. Cooper's an asshole who's been going around killing people for quite some time. He's chopped up at least 10 victims and he's got another one fresh on his phone right now that he's keeping an eye on while attending a concert with his daughter. Every once in a while he comes up with an excuse, he goes to the bathroom, he walks in the hallways, and... He just has no problem checking in on the guy out in public. Cooper's supposed to be meticulous. He's supposed to be tough to catch. He's wily. He's very, very good at what he does. And he has skirted by the law so many times it's hard to keep count. So this becomes a little bit harder to believe when he's just in the bathroom checking out a feed of a guy chained to a basement screaming for help. He didn't even go into a stall. He's just right there in public in the bathroom, checking in on the guy, talking shit. It's, it's just absolutely insane. But really, everyone is dumb in this film, and maybe that's what M. Night's going for. In this universe that he's crafted, people are incredibly stupid, and so Cooper is just a little bit smarter than them. But he's also dumb. When I was in middle school, I had to take a class called Math Tech. The other kids in my grade, well, most of them, were in Algebra or Algebra 2. But not me, because I'm an idiot at math. So I was in with a bunch of other idiots at math. And so even the smartest kid in that class was still a freaking moron when it came to mathematics. And so maybe that's the way to look at this film. It's the only way that makes even a little bit of sense. But let's move on to nine. Let's make no mistake, Trap is barely a film. Really, it functions more as an audition tape for M. Night's daughter, who plays Lady Raven here. This is her kind of coming out party as an actress, as a pop sensation, whatever she wants to be a performer at the end of the day. She's singing her heart out, she's dancing, she's doing the whole Taylor Swift thing without earning any of it. But she has the audience, 20,000 people in this arena, she has the spectacle. The only thing she's really missing is the security. After the concert's over, Cooper threatens this woman in the dumbest way possible with a phone saying, hey, if you scream, I'm going to kill this random stranger that I have here. Like, uh, she doesn't even know if he's telling the truth about it. All, all she has to do is yell, but she's not going to. She's going to play along. Where is the security? If you look at Swift, if you look at Grande, if you look at any of these high profile pop sensations, they have an entourage. They have a crew of people surrounding them to keep the paparazzi at bay, to keep off the stands, to keep off the psychopaths. You have to have that. So why is Raven stag? She goes into the stretch limo with no one else besides the driver and now Cooper and his daughter. Where is her security? And also M. Night took the time to establish for no discernible reason at all that Lady Raven has asthma. We see her take a puff of the inhaler. Why? What is this a red herring? But to what end? Why did you take the time to show us this, M. Night? What's, what's the end game here? And that just adds another layer to it. She could use some assistance. She could use a support staff. But no, it's just going to be Cooper with her. Cooper and his kid. Those last two dumb things in the movie were basically layups. The rest of this is completely ludicrous. Late in the game, the SWAT team surrounds Cooper's place where he lives with his family, his wife, his daughter, and they have him trapped. 
Coop's got another way out, fam. He's got a secret tunnel that he's able to go out of his home underground like he's a fucking gopher and pop out in another house on the other side. And then he just heads on over to the limo, tells him he needs to drive. Limo, limo driver leaves, I guess. That's, that's enough for him. And they head on their merry way. What? How did he dig this tunnel in secret? How did the wife and daughter never find out? Cooper pulled an Andy Dufresne in his own home. Did he put up a poster behind the hole in the wall and he's just, he's playing games of baseball, kicking out the dirt in the backyard? I may have fell asleep or blacked out, but I don't even remember him going through the tunnel in the movie. I think he just says he did. They don't even have, they don't even bother showing any of it. It's just, oh yeah, I had dug a hole. Bet you weren't, bet you didn't see that coming. No, of course not. Since the movie has gone out of its way several times to establish that Cooper is essentially Houdini, you would think that once they finally get him in cuffs and throw him into that little prison cell vehicle, that some guards would also be there with him. They wouldn't just have him in there by himself, or they would at least have a way to monitor some cameras on him. No, no, no. This highly dangerous, highly skilled killer that they've been tracking for years He's fine by himself with no cameras, no security guards. What's the worst that could happen? <sighs> he gets away. That's the worst that can happen. I mean, that's the assumption. He breaks the handcuffs. He looks at the camera, gives that trademark patented smile, and the movie ends. And I'm sure we'll see him again return in whatever M. Night Universal crossover with Glass and Split and who gives a shit. I mentioned some of these, or maybe all of them, I don't know at this point, in my spoiler breakdown, but I cannot get over how absolutely asinine it is that the dude selling merch has time during this massive concert with all these screaming fans to step aside and compliment Cooper for doing the bare minimum as a grown-ass adult by saying, yeah, my daughter doesn't need the t-shirt, the last one that you have. That can go to the other girl that's a little bit more rabid and looks like she's going to stab us if we don't give her the shirt. She can have it. This impressed the dude so much that not only did he tell Cooper why there was beefed up security today, cameras being positioned everywhere, some old school FBI agent, but also gave him a guided tour of the back warehouse so that he can get another t-shirt. Are you out of your mind? Even on a normal concert day, this would never happen, but we're on a day where everyone's in high alert. Every man in the building is apparently a suspect, which I will talk about more in a little bit. You're not gonna bring this guy into the back room. And also no guard is posted in the warehouse area checking badges. Cooper doesn't have a badge at this point. You would think one of these SWAT team guys or FBI or police or whoever's checking badges at the doors because we've already established, thanks to FBI lady, that Cooper is a slippery minx and he's going to do anything he can to get away from this scenario. But no, pretty much everyone Coop comes into contact with spills the beans of what's going on today at the arena. Amazing. They should all be fired. Speaking of security cameras, why? Why even put them up if you're not going to utilize them? My boy Coop's involved in a couple mishaps that take place during this event. One of which, he pushes a woman down some stairs. Yes, this woman was tipsy. She had too much to drink. He took advantage of the situation. Short for situation. But the woman still horrifically fell down a bunch of stairs. Everything should be called into question. You put up security cameras. Play back the tape. See what took place. That one I'm willing to look past, but certainly not the next thing that takes place when a woman gets her face burnt off because Coop messed with the fryer and the thing exploded all over her. To a simpleton, this might look like a freak accident, but to this highly credited, highly skilled FBI agent lady, you would think she would leap to the surveillance footage to see what took place. And you would be wrong. And that really brings us to the Miss Bliss in the room. What the hell was the point of this FBI agent lady? At first, I thought they were doing kind of a David Fincher's The Game scenario, where all of this was really mapped out intentionally 
to drive Cooper like a rat in the maze exactly where they wanted him to go. They were intentionally feeding him information through different workers because she knows his psychological profile. She knows where he's going to go and the moves he's going to make. She purposely talks over the walkies, understandably thinking that he's already listening in because he knows how to get shit done. But that doesn't seem to be the case at all because the way this ends up playing out makes no sense. There is no shot she drove him through this maze to the limousine where this singer was going to put herself in harm's way. It's preposterous. And also, M. Night doesn't even really put that out there as an option. There's no real hints that that's what's been going on. There was an opportune time for that to play out at the end. Because actress Haley Mills, aka Miss Bliss from Saved by the Bell, if you remember those early ones, or if we go really far back, she was the young girl in Parent Trap, now trapping a parent. Wink, 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 wink. Never mentions that that was the plan all along. Instead, her only real purpose seems to be to stand in a doorway and trick Cooper into thinking that's his mom because he's been seeing her i think exactly one time in the movie he he sees her for a second this movie sucks i feel like there was something here but it wasn't fleshed out at all and instead the focus was put on m knight's daughter and her singing career and not near enough time on things that actually could have made this work well because there there is a foundation here that had some interesting concepts Oh my god, we're at the final moments of the film. Coop's been hit with a couple tasers. He goes down. They get him into custody. They're gonna take him away. But first, not only are they gonna let him take a beat and embrace his daughter, right after mere minutes ago, he dug out the eyes of an officer, they're also gonna let him go down, pick up a bike, and examine it. Why? For what purpose? This gives him the opportune time to rip off a bike spoke that he can later use to take off his shackles. Completely redonkulous. This guy would have been fucking thrown to the ground, cuffs behind the back, picked up by his shirt, and thrown into the vehicle. There's no like, hey, we got him. Oh, get, let me help you up, sir. Oh, let me dust you off. You got some grass stains there. You want to hug your daughter? Sure, of course. You've earned it, buddy. You only chopped up 10 people that we know of and had another one primed and ready to go and you put our officer in the ER. But yeah, no, 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 no. Do whatever you want. Hug your daughter, fix a bike, jerk off quick. We don't care. In the number two spot is Lady Bird, Raven herself. Not only did she never yell for help when walking by security guards in the hallway and other people she knew, cast members, friends, family, whatever. She throws a Hail Mary doesn't let Cooper out of the vehicle when he wants to be let out, which, by the way, I still can't get over how insane this moment is. Cooper's gonna get out of the vehicle at the end of the block with his daughter, and then what? W? He just wins the day? Everyone knows who he is at this point. How did he plan on getting out of here? Regardless, they go to the house where they live. This is Raven's idea. And it's a pretty smart one. Okay, you got him. You have his name. You know what he looks like. You know where he lives. Get the cops out there right away. She opts instead to get out of the car and go inside. Alone. What? This entire sequence is beyond stupid. It has to be seen to be believed, really, but you shouldn't see it because it's so unbelievably terrible. She has a nice little snack with the family, plays a beautiful number, a nice little ditty on the piano, complete with vocals and everything, steals a phone, goes into the bathroom, makes a freaking live stream. It's so preposterous from top to bottom. But it all started because she made the conscious decision to go into the house. Even though the killer is telling her to piss off. She's like, no, no, I think this works out better for everyone if I go into this house by myself without contacting the authorities, without even telling anyone what's going on. Insanity. And before some stupid fuck goes into the comments and tells me, Adam, you didn't understand what M. Night was going for. It all makes perfect sense. Keep in mind, this is the same guy that wrote a story about aliens that go to a planet that's made up primarily of the thing that kills the aliens. 
And I like that movie. So I'm not even an all-in hater of M. Night Shyamalan either. This movie just didn't work on any level for me. In the number one spot, just the entire premise. Full stop. The entire concept behind this movie makes no sense at all. The FBI, in their infinite wisdom, decides to spring a trap on a serial killer at a massive Taylor Swift-esque concert that seats 20,000 people. Okay, maybe that, hang on, hang on. It gets dumber. They don't know who he is or what he looks like. They have vague information to go off that ranges from middle-aged white dude to elderly black man to person with white hair. It's all over. It's, it's basically just male. That is what they have to go on. Man. And I don't even think they're sure if it's not just a woman dressed up as a man. Or a couple of kids on top of each other wearing a trench coat posing as a man. As the concert starts to wind down, they get more and more desperate to find the guy. So they decide, oh, we're just going to arrest every guy that comes out of this concert. What? What? There are so many more absolutely preposterous things to talk about, but I gave you 10. 10 of the ones I think are the most egregious, and I would love to hear from you. Did I miss one that's just point blank ridiculous on its face? Let me know in the comments. Please like the video, and again, think of subscribing. I post content every single week on the channel, all movie related, all the time. And listen, I hated this film, but I mentioned a movie that I think is fantastic that you might agree with. Use that instead of this movie. Watch David Fincher's The Game. I thought that movie was riveting. It was thrilling. It kept me hooked from beginning to end. Check that one out. You might have yourself a better time. Okay, those are my thoughts. Again, I'd love to hear yours. Please join me on the channel. Become a member on Patreon. That's how I keep the lights on here. Patreon.com slash Adam Does Movies. A lot of different tier options. And there's a ton of exclusive videos over there. You can become a member right here via YouTube as well. And I also have a second channel, Adam Does Rants. Would love to have you join both. Hopefully, i see you next time.